one. sweetheart. Good morning. How are you this morning? Good. Good. Warm up by the fire? Mm -hmm. Big brother? <laughs> Back to the homestead <laughs> in the greenhouse again and got some noisy ducks out there <laughs> uh, today's gonna be another Q&A video uh, a couple months ago we on our community page we invited you all to ask us some questions and we've been working through those questions doing one of these Q&A videos per month uh, it was a lot of questions, so I'm not going to finish going through that list even today. I may take a couple, few more videos to get through all of your questions. But in any case, I'm going to tackle a few more questions today. And let me tell you, there's some difficult ones today. So hopefully I can give some honest, helpful answers um, to these questions today. Uh, first one's actually pretty simple. Amanda wants to know a little bit about our row covers, specifically because she wants to protect brassicas from caterpillars. We do have a video on how we put together our little mini tunnels, so if I can find it I will try and link it here. But it's quite a simple process. We just use 18 inch rebar. Um, I believe they're half inch to three quarter inch diameter. Um, and that's what we use to connect PVC pipe hoops to. 
Um, so the PVC needs to be a little bit larger than the diameter of the, the rebar that you use. So it's up to you. You can go with a more stout PVC, which I do recommend. The bigger the diameter, the stronger it's going to be. So we do th about three hoops for a nine to 10 foot long bed. The row cover we got at Amazon and we have a couple different thicknesses. You can get some pretty thick stuff, which is great for the really, really cold months. Um, and then you can also get some thinner stuff that's better for in the springtime and going into summertime when you get a lot of those caterpillars. And then we found that the best thing to hold the fabric down so that the wind doesn't blow it up is just an old piece of two by four board. Um, it's got enough weight to it and it's really easy to just lift it on and put it back in place when you need to open things up to harvest or water or that sort of thing. Uh, water does go through the row cover fabric, but not as well as obviously having the cover off. So sometimes you do have to check and give a little extra water if the rain is not penetrating through quite enough. I highly recommend the mini tunnels, the covers for brassicas. If you live in an area like we do, we just have tons of little moths and they can devastate a whole bed of brassicas in no time uh, without the protection of the covers. All right, next question is uh, Terrell. She wants to know, do we clip our chickens wings? Uh, thankfully, we don't have to do that very often, but every once in a while we'll have a chicken that gets out and stays out. Typically, the chickens that get out will actually go back in and so we just let them get out, do their thing, go back in. Um, but if it becomes a problem, we will clip wings. It's a pretty simple thing to do. If you've never clipped wings before, um, you can look it up on YouTube. It's really easy. All right, next question is from Lee. She wants to know what are some fun family activities that we like to do outside? So I think I'll probably ask the children to give some input on this one, but some of the things off the top of my head right now are uh, in the spring and the fall, we like to go for a drive around our neighborhood. We've, we're on dirt roads, so the kids will jump in the back of the truck and we'll just kind of drive slowly around and look at all the beautiful spring and fall colors. Uh, when there are no ticks or chiggers out, we love hiking around on our property. We have 20 acres and a lot of it's wooded. Uh, there's only certain times of the year when we can really uh, explore on our property. So in the fall and spring, usually <clears throat> we like to do that as a family, just hike around, especially along the creek and explore. That's a lot of fun. Personally, my favorite outside activity as a family is just hanging out in the garden on a beautiful day. We have a couple places to sit and I'm hoping to develop more little areas where we can sit and just look around, enjoy the beauty, enjoy each other. Uh, especially on nice days in the morning. Esther Pye and I both, and the, and the little girls, just love to go out and meander around the garden, see what new has popped up, what new flower has opened up, that sort of thing. Hey Josh, <laughs> got a question for you. Can you take a quick break? Sure. Just working on getting the posts here. We definitely need a new corner post and a new fence line. Look at this, guys. Cows have mashed it down. So we're putting up five foot fencing, horse fencing, huh? Yep. When I was digging this hole, I didn't find a single rock. Yeah, that's unheard of. <laughs> it's all just solid clay and then there was nice topsoil. Not one rock, huh? Yep. yep. Well, here. It's about the biggest rock I can find in there. <laughs> <laughs> that is so unheard of. Uh-huh. Wow, I wonder why that is. Maybe because it's the edge of the pasture here? Something. It's just kind of piled up and wow <laughs> made it a lot easier to dig the hole oh, I bet <laughs> uh, so we had a question what do we like to do as a family outside so outside activities as a family we like to go on family lot family walks um, also normally our whole family doesn't do this but we like to play like games like tag or volleyball is also fun <laughs> and we like to play on the trampoline a lot. Yep. Yeah, especially uh, when it's a little bit colder days, you'll do snuggle parties, take blankets and stuff out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the summertime, you'll put sprinklers underneath it and jump around in the, the water. <laughs> yeah, the trampoline's been great. <laughs> yep. And work on projects. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of projects for sure. Maybe not relaxing, but some projects are pretty fun, huh? Mm-hmm. How do you guys like fencing? <laughs> <laughs> Not our favorite. <laughs> but there is worse things to be doing. Yeah, very true. <laughs> cool, thanks Josh. You're welcome.
So Biddle, what's an activity that you like to do outside with your brothers and sisters? I like to do play cooking. Ah, yeah. You guys have a little play kitchen outside yeah. and you make little pretend desserts and share them with your big brothers. And yeah, and then we also make play salads, play treats, <laughs> play like bread. Yep, that's a lot of fun, huh? What kind of activities do you like to do outside? Walk. Walk. You like to go on walks? Yeah. Mm hmm. Sometimes do brothers push you around on little bicycles and things? Or in the wagon. You like to go on wagon rides, huh? Yeah. Wagon rides are a lot of fun. All right, and Joseph just thought of one more. I like to build forts. Yes, you guys like to take old scrap wood and vinyl and blocks and whatever you can find to make forts, huh? Mm -hmm. We also like badminton, and we sometimes go fishing, but not very often. Yeah, Daddy would love it if we could go fishing way more than we do, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a really relaxing, fun activity. And yeah, I forgot about the badminton. I think we need some new rackets though, huh? <laughs> and an activity that we haven't done yet that I would love to be able to set up is ping pong. I grew up playing ping pong and loved it. So eventually when we have a space for the table, maybe on our patio area somewhere, yeah. um, it would be fun to get ping pong going. All right, neat. So a lot of the activities that we do as a family have already been shared, but you thought of a couple that we haven't thought of so far. What, what are they? Well, riding bikes and playing in the creek. Yes, there's a really cool creek not too far from here that we often go to mm -hmm. as a family when the weather's good, huh? Yep. And then our own creek as well. Yeah. Our creek doesn't have the best yeah. swimming areas, but it's still fun to hang out and yeah. play and cool, cool. off. Oh, yes, cool Glass off. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so next up, uh, Stephanie wants to know, have we changed anything with our homeschooling? And she wants to know if the olders help, the, help teach the youngers. Uh, with homeschooling and with things on the homestead. Uh, so we haven't changed a whole lot with our homeschooling other than I've really simplified our record keeping charts. I like to keep record keeping very simple so every year for the past few years I've been simplifying our charts. It's just a state requirement to keep a record. We probably will never have to show that record um, but I keep it just in case. If we ever need to show proof of the time spent learning, um, I'll have that. So I've thought about the idea of actually doing an ebook about how we homeschool and possibly do a printable of that chart, record keeping chart, uh, for anyone that's interested. So if that's something you would be interested in, please let me know in the comments below. And as far as our older children helping with the youngers, yes, <laughs> they. I've been doing that for years and they still do that in so many different ways from reading books to the little ones to helping with tidy up times um, like for example Josh takes Abigail for about five minutes every afternoon and just walks with her around the house and helps her tidy up things that she's left behind he's just helping create habits in her of being tidy taking care of her things and uh, helping to keep the house in order Another example is Caleb. He's kind of taken on helping Joseph with keeping his areas organized. So Caleb will re regularly check around all the different places that are kind of Joseph's spaces. <laughs> he's Particularly he's got a new space in the shop and Caleb will just help remind him to hey take need to tidy that up a little bit or how can I help you tidy up. Uh, and then Caleb also helps remind Joseph of some of his chores that he will often forget and so having that older to be consistently helping a younger in an area creates habits and then over time the older can kind of back off and let the little one go and the little ones got it they can do it on their own if you've got olders and youngers highly recommend that you find ways to encourage the olders to help the youngers and it's a wonderful thing all right the next question is a tough one and actually two people asked a similar question so randy wants to know some tips for those who want to move out of town, especially facing the challenge of rising prices on land. Um, and then Harmony Holistics Homestead similarly wants to know um, recommendations for moving off grid to a ro remote location with little funds. So 
our family, uh, of all the different challenges that we could have had to deal with along the along this journey of homesteading. Finances has been really the only challenge. Our relationships as a family, our motivation and desire as a family to do this way of life, for the most part our health, uh, the productivity of our land, all of these things have been wonderful. But the one thing that we've lacked <laughs> is finances. <laughs> and so this question comes with some experience and it also can be challenging because often you'll see um, other YouTubers who uh, have been blessed financially and they're able to do so much so quickly. When you don't have the finances, it takes a lot of patience. You have to work with what you have, start small, go slow, 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 and just be patient. So I guess one of the biggest tips I would have if, if you're designing this way of life and you have limited resources is together is better. So, so if you have a family, make sure that your family is united and that you all want to do this journey together. That's really important. And then also find other families who want to do the same thing. Perhaps you can pool resources. So maybe you don't have enough money to buy the land, but a close friend has the finances for the land and you could go in on it together in some way. Um, there's a book called Off Off Grid by Michael Bunker that's got some really neat examples of families and communities coming together to homestead together. There are still a lot of areas, especially here in Missouri, where you can have multi-family dwellings and you don't have to go through any um, legal codes or anything like that. And so look for land that you could go in on with other families if possible. And the last thing is you don't have to go big. Um, you can fit a lot of productivity and production in one acre. Um, there's people who even use a quarter acre and produce a ton. So bigger is not always better. Sometimes less is more. Uh, so just use what resources you have and find other people who have the similar dream and vision who are like-minded that you can possibly join together with. Um, yeah, hope that's helpful in some way. All right, let's see. Harmony Holistics Homestead. She also wanted to know if I water bath or pressure can. Yes, I do water bath can, mostly just um, jams and jellies at this point. I do want to eventually produce enough tomatoes that we can do our own tomato products. Um, but beyond that, I don't do a lot of canning. I don't yet have a pressure canner, but I would like to get one eventually uh, to have that as an option for preserving meat. Uh, Harmony Holistics Homestead also wanted to know what is my favorite herb for healing purposes? That's a tough one. There's a lot of great herbs out there. I think one of my favorites right now though is lemon balm. It grows well in the garden and it's so wonderful for so many things. Colds, flus, fever reduction, antiviral, antibacterial, um, helps with anxiety and stress. It's just a wonderful all-around herb and it's very delicious as well. So uh, lemon balm tea is wonderful. Yeah, so I guess that's one of my favorites right now. And Harmony Holistic Homestead also has one more question. <laughs> Wants to know, what are your plans for when the government gets rid of the dollar and we go to a digital society? Well, that's one of the reasons that we are homesteading. <laughs> we are trying to set, set things in place so that we can produce as much off of our land as we can and also have things that we can trade or barter with others in the, in the community. Um, so she, she also said, I know we should take one day at a time. Um, yes, but it's okay to plan. It's all, it's good to actually think about what could be happening in the future and, and start working toward preparations for that, not with fear or anxiety, but just with a, with wisdom as the father leads and provides. Though we don't have a lot of finances, something we've been trying to do is just put little bits toward bulk food storage. Some months we're able to put aside uh, quite a bit, other months we don't get to put much aside at all. Our big picture goal to prepare for a situation where we may not be able to buy or sell food is to just keep working toward uh, producing as much as we can off our own land and then also building relationships with other people who we might be able to trade with eventually. And I don't necessarily think that a digital currency is a bad thing. 
However, it could become a way that really controls and limits people. And we believe in uh, the biblical perspective on what's coming. Um, Revelation and some of the prophets, things that haven't happened yet. We believe that there's eventually going to be a time where unless you take the mark of the beast, of the evil one, you won't be able to buy and sell. So perhaps the digital currency is preparing the way for that. And if that's the case, we won't be buying and selling using the digital currency. Ultimately, we are trusting in our Father to provide for all that we need. He is more than able. <laughs> and so um, we really feel like if he gives the resources to stock up on food like he gave to Joseph during the time of famine in Egypt, then uh, yeah, definitely use those resources to stock up on food. <clears throat> If he gives resources for producing your own food, um, which he's given to us slow and steady over the last almost 10 years, um, then yeah, that's what we need to be doing, growing our own food. But if you're someone who hasn't received resources for either, maybe you don't have any food storage, you don't have any way of growing your own food, fear not. If you belong to Yahweh, if you are his by faith in his son Yeshua, then fear not. He can rain down manna from heaven if need be. I uh, just want to encourage you guys, let's not be afraid of what we see happening in the world. Let's not be fearful. Instead, let's rejoice because the day is near and we may get to see the return of our Messiah soon. All right, next question is from, I think it's the Manajov. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but she wants to know how we deal with processing animals. She grew up on a homestead and would often get attached to animals. And uh, so she wants to know what we do uh, to handle processing animals emotionally. Yeah, that's another tough question. None of us enjoy taking the life of an animal. I think what really helps us though is the realization that all animals are going to die at some point. And so if we can make that death as quick and painless as possible, it's actually a benefit to the animal. Um, it's keeping that animal from having to suffer in death. And so we try and think of it that way. In some ways you have to just kind of disconnect there and when it's time for an animal to go, you let go of all those memories. Um, you're thankful for those memories, but then you have to then almost bury them, if that makes sense. And we actually have a burial spot for animals. So animals that die um, just predation or on their own for some reason, we have a little animal burial ground and the kids will put stones with, na with the animal's name on it. Um, just helps kind of give that closure. I think you have to close the door on each animal that's processed. Um, and let it go. If you keep holding on to all of those memories and, and if you choose to dwell on the moment that that life ends, it, it's just too hard. <laughs> and so uh, there's got to be closure. As with any death, there's got to be um, a little bit of grieving and then there's got to be closure and you have to move on. Yeah, so it's never easy. We often ask for help from friends to come and do the processing for us uh, because it's just so difficult. So we're really thankful to have some great friends in our community that it's not that they like processing animals, but they don't don't mind it so much. So we get help when we can. That's really a blessing. All right, last question for today is from Danica. I think I said that right, hopefully, or Danica. Um, she wants to know if I could write a list of all the herbs in our garden and their uses. Um, I've done some videos on that in the past. I'll Again, I'll try and link if I find a specific video that might help you. But uh, this is another topic that I'm thinking of actually writing an ebook on and possibly having a printable. So if garden herbs uh, and their uses is something that you'd be interested in me making an ebook for, please let me know in the comments below. So I won't go into all of the herbs here and now because that would take another hour long video probably. <laughs> So I'll try and include more of that um, as the growing season gets started again in the spring for you and then also possibly create an ebook um, that in a printable that if that would be helpful. All right, so we still have about 20 questions on that community post, um, but I think this video has gotten long enough. So next month we'll try and tackle some more of those questions. Uh, if you've not hit the subscribe button yet and you enjoy our videos, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, we have had some interest in a join button, so we are working on that. 
At this point, I'm not able to commit to extra content. Uh, we have patrons that I already feel like I need to be making extra content for and I'm not able to. So adding a join button here on YouTube would mean more commitment to be able to give those members um, something extra for their membership. Uh, so those of you who've been asking for the join button, we are thinking about it. We're just not ready to commit to that yet. Uh, so we'll see. Yeah, as always, thank you so much to our patrons who make these videos possible. Until next time, we pray blessings over you and yours. And whatever you do, do it with your whole heart. Ooh. Thank you, Brenda, for the wool, wool socks. Those look so nice. Those are going to keep your toes warm. <laughs>